Keeping on our journey here at the Research Symposium, I'm here with my friend Gabby, and we're going to talk a little bit more about your research project and the power of the healing touch and comfort care. So yes. tell me a little bit about why you chose this project and what the research entailed. Yeah, so I was actually located at a hospice facility called the Fairfield County House um, in Stanford, and this is something that I never really thought I saw myself doing. The elderly population isn't really what I want to do in nursing, um, but I was just observing the nurses and the CNAs at the facility and just the way that they interact with their patients. This is actually a picture of the house right now. It's not a hospital at all. It looks like Chip and Joanna Gaines designed the inside of it. It's a six patient um, facility. And just the way that the nurses interacted with them, woke them up with a kiss on the forehead. I thought that was something so special and not seen as much in the hospital setting. Um, and just like holding their hand while they were feeding them and just as they were giving the medications, just like sitting on the bed next to them, especially with patients that can't hear um, speak or um, see. It was just, it made such a difference in their care and then their outcomes as well. Absolutely. We were just chatting about this right before our conversation that the end of life is a really tough time yeah. for families. So I want to know what you learned during this research. What are your biggest takeaways um, and what do you hope to bring with you after graduation? Yeah. So from this project in specific, with COVID and everything, it, there's been such a lack of connection and physical touch. And physical touch promotes the production of hormones such as oxytocin, dopamine, and serotonin, which are the hormones that make you feel warm and fuzzy um, in your body. So just by producing those hormones, it can actually help you improve your health, um, your comfort, and actually for the nurse as well, it's really good to prevent burnout and remind you why you chose this vocation as well. Absolutely. So impressive. Um, so you did a lot of this research, of course, independently. You're a one-woman show here. Yes. <laughs> but tell us about your professor support or faculty staff members yes. that helped you along the way. So I was actually prepared with um, Dr. Donna Coletti. She's the um, nurse preceptor at my school, and she actually created the um, Canarinic Center for Palliative Care in the Egan School. Um, so she is a doctor in palliative care and um, is the doctor at this facility. So she was able to have me be a nursing student in the facility. And then I was paired with the RN Doreen Burgos um, up there as well. Um, she was the one that showed me the ropes of the place and the facility and someone that I actually physically followed around and passed meds with and fed patients with and everything like that. Fantastic. I'm sure it was great to have that mentorship. Yes, for sure. Um, so bringing it here today to the symposium, tell us a little bit about your experience. What has it been like talking to your peers and staff around Fairfield community? It's really cool. Like everybody, we're always in scrubs. So I feel like it's different to see nursing students in business casual things. And it's just like a great way to end my time here at Fairfield and just doing research that is really important to each individual nursing student, I think is really important. Um, and I've been loving talking to professors and talking with you about my project and everything. So it's just been a great experience. Absolutely. Yeah. So last but not least, Gabby, what's next for the project and for you? So for me, what's coming next is that I accepted a job at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. My dream is to be in palliative care for pediatrics. Um, and with this project and this research, I've learned the importance of physical touch and just holding a patient's hand, holding a family member's hand in a tough time, especially at end of life. Um, I think that's really important. And just life in general, I've noticed like when my friends and I are talking and it's an emotional conversation, just holding their hand really does make such a difference in my response and then their response as well. So special. Well, thanks for sharing all of your hard work. Thank and congratulations. you so much. Thank you.